Troops, here we are. It's a new year, but it's the same Eagle podcast and it's the same awesome guests. And I'm being very, very lucky to find another awesome guest. And it's the first guest of 2020. Uh, so there's no pressure. But <laughs> the lady thrives on pressure. I'm uh, very, very happy and pleased to be joined by Rebecca Ollum, who is a professional bikini pro athlete. Rebecca, how are you doing? Hi, John. I'm doing really well, thank you. How are you? I'm, I'm brilliant. Um, a crazy few days, you know, going full chat at trying to run businesses and, and have a personal life and trying to be everywhere on social media um, has its draw. And it, does take, <laughs> it does take a lot out of you. Um, what about yourself? How was your, is it too late to talk about New Year and Christmas? Maybe, but tell us how um, that went for you. So mine was pretty strict, to be fair, because well, wow. I I um I started prep um on the twenty eighth of December, so Christmas. I didn't go too mad. Yeah. So New Year's Eve was a write off. I was in bed before twelve. Wow. Um, watching Jules Holland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, listening to the fireworks. So it was it was a pretty laid back one for me. Yeah. So we we'll go straight into what you're going for. Um, for those who don't know, um. What is a bikini pro athlete? So a bikini pro athlete is basically somebody who you basically prepare for, for your competition. Yeah. Um, everybody's different how long their prep is, but basically yeah. you um, follow a strict diet, yeah. you work out, and then at the end you sh basically showcase yourself. So yeah. You go up on the stage and you have um, a posing routine. Yeah. You get you get judged on that. You get judged on how you look, your hair, your makeup, your bikini, and you basically just show all your hard work aesthetically, like all your hard right. work. Okay. Um, that's an interesting one. Uh, posing routines. Is this something that you obviously as well? You practice a posing routine, and have you got a, obviously you've got a set routine, and, and who does that for you? Yeah, so basically, um, it's up to you who you want to go with. There are posing coaches, oh, okay. so um, you you kind of do your research and decide who it is you want to go with. Right. Um, so yeah, I've I've got my posing coach, Anka Wald. She's a pro bikini athlete. Right. She's, um, okay. She's she's amazing. So um, I actually have my first posing session with her this coming uh, Sunday. Right. So, and and yeah. what does it? Talk us through the process. What is a pausing? What, what is it that you're going to actually be doing with her? So Anka will d basically decide what um, poses suit suit my physique and oh, okay. um, what look what looks good. How I can make obviously when I've done all the hard work and and my body's in the shape I want it to be. What sort of positions and right. angles? Um, and just to give you confidence, because um, the federation that I'm competing in, Pure Elite, um, yeah. it's, it's quite like sassy with your posing. All right, okay. Uh, every, every federation has a different posing criteria. Right. So with Pure Elite, it's best to find out what federation you go into, what, what yeah. they kind of want. So with Pure Elite, it's very sassy. Uh, sass, I can't say the word. Yeah, sassy. sassy. Yeah. It's very like, hello, Beyonce in the room. Here. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> yeah so you've got to project the confidence from the moment that you walk on stage like it's got yeah. to be you're judged from the moment you step onto that stage yeah wow um what does it take to put yourself under that sort of scrutiny where you are being judged on looks hair makeup body fat physique like that is very materialistic what does that affect you in any way sort of um Sort of mental health at the moment is talked about a lot. Yeah. Um, and obviously being judged on looks, physique, etc. How how does that sort of, where, where does that sit with you? I think the thing is, if you decide that you want to compete in these kind of competitions, you can't, you can't although it's easier said than done, you can't take things too personal because it might mm -hmm. not necessarily, you just might not be what they're looking for on that day. It, yeah. It, there's so many different girls that compete and so many different looks and um, it's such a wide variety of, of girls that come up on the stage. I, I think you've got to have the attitude and just think you, you can't, you can't beat yourself up about it. If, if you're not sort of thick skinned, yeah, yeah. it's not the right thing for you to be doing. Yeah, no, that, that's a, that's a fair point. And um, what is it? 
have you always sort of been thick skinned or is it something that you've developed and is there like a a, a, a thick skin coach <laughs> <laughs> no there isn't there isn't a thick skin coach that'd be quite good actually <laughs> but um I, I think as as growing up, I think I, I've 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 got my thick skin through that. I went to an all girls school, right? Okay. So that was quite bitchy, and it was oh, very really? yeah. It, do you know what? If I could turn back time, I I don't think I would have. I don't think I would have gone to an all girls school. Right. Um, you got girls picking on you for the way you look. And um, I particularly got picked on because of my hair. Right. Um, there was this one girl, and she just. Because I, but it's before hair straighteners come out, so right, okay. and I've got naturally curly hair, and yeah, sometimes it could look a bit fluffy or a bit like frizzy. And she yeah. just used to really like give me stick for it. So oh. I think, yeah, I just think you just, I, I think personally, mine's just through past experiences, I've just got my thick skin, right? But um, I also, yeah, no, no, it's it, it, it's interesting, and there's there's always a it seems uh, there's uh, many people who I speak to on podcasts. There always seems to be someone in the past, like a a bullying figure that sort yeah. of sticks. Doesn't matter who who I've had on. It's you know I've, I, it's interest interesting that you should say that that there's always seems to be that um, that figure. So sort of going back to your to your posing coach, does she sort of work out? I think what you were saying is your look, your body type, um, yeah. and what you're going to go for. So. The routine is going to flow through what you, you're going to look like on the day. That's it. Yeah. She'll go with what she wow. feels suits me and my character. Yeah. And when you first walk on the stage, do you walk on with other, other women or do you come on alone or how, how does it play out? So you do something which is called a tea walk. So um, right. it, you, you come on individually and it, it goes by um, your first name alphabetically. So oh, the person, the person who say a, a girl's called um, Anita, yeah, so yeah. because she begins with A, she come on first. Um, yeah. So she come out, she do her tea walk, and once she's done her ah. posing, she goes to the back of the stage, and then the next girl comes out. Yeah. So I'm Rebecca, so I'm R. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. there's quite a few girls lined up. By the time it's my turn to come out, then once you've done your tea and um, walk, you come out and you do your quarter turns. Right. So that's everybody that comes out and does ah, that. Okay. And is it an advantage? I mean, you can't do nothing about your name. Your name is your name. But is it an advantage <laughs> to be? Is it is it advantage to be first or be last or be in the middle? And are you what? Are you looking at other other competitors and thinking, oh, she's in good nick. Oh, she's got good hair. Or do you just think I'm me and, and I'm just focusing on what I've got to do? And yeah, is there I've... any, is there any gamesmanship? Like, I, I don't want to sort of go sidetrack here, but I watched a documentary with Arnie Pump and Iron, where oh, right. he would like say to other competitors, "Oh, if this competition had been in three more weeks, you'd have been ready." You know that right. sort of little psychology, and they would like. Uh, is there any sort of gamesmanship, or does everyone just pretend to like each other? No, do you know what? Because when I first went into it, I didn't know what to expect. I did think, oh, is it going to be a little bit catty, a bit bitchy, a bit clicky? Mm -hmm. But it isn't. Honest to God, it, uh, people that I've met through competing are probably the nicest people that you'll ever meet. Wow. Everybody's really supportive. Um, obviously, people are in it to win it. But yeah, yeah. Of course. Everyone, everyone, it's good sportsmanship. Like, if you win, you know, the person that comes second will come up to you and will generally be happy for you. Wow. But, and, um, yeah, that's interesting. I, in a world where everyone's trying to play the bad guy at the moment and sort of become that larger-than-life character, I was just wondering if there's anyone in your world who was, like, sort of doing the Conor McGregor, you know, being this loud vocal character trying to sort of, you know, be, be the bad guy. But obviously, it doesn't doesn't work in in your world everyone's still sort of um sportsmanship yeah yeah that's I, it yeah i think it's something that we are going away from sportsmanship seems to be a bit of a dying um a bit of a dying breed which is a shame yeah. um so how many people um would be competing on a day and is there sort of like a uh different weight classes um what what talk us through the process so um, it, it, it varies. I mean, you can never predict exactly how many people will be doing it, but you'll, you'll, you'll get at least three, four hundred people, maybe. Wow. It, it depends because Pure Elite, they have, well, 
they have the UK Championships in April yeah. this year, which is what I'm doing. But it's yeah. actually expanded now, and um, it's going to Romania, oh, wow. Australia. Um, there's Manche- they do it up in Manchester and uh, Dublin. Oh, nice. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's really expanding now, which is fantastic to see. But, yeah, um, sorry, what did you say? What, sorry, what was your... So, do you have different categories? Is it people that different it. Weight, yeah, different weight, different weight groups? And... So, I believe the men do, but with, oh, women, okay. it's, with women, it's different. So, when, so, there's two divisions. There's the amateur division and the pro division. Right. So with the amateur division, with the ladies, rather than weight, it's, um, it's on your height. So there's ah, bikini, okay. bikini short and then bikini tall. Right, okay. So that, that's how they do it with the women. And, and what, what is that? The height, is that, is that like, what, what is that breaking down into five, five foot, five and a half foot? Like what, what? I, I think what I can think for the top of my head, I think bikini tall starts from five foot five and above. And then All right. Think, bikini short is below that wow um where do you where do you fall into this so i'm bikini tall so i'm oh, five wow. foot eight. Oh well that's uh that's a good height yeah and you you talk you talk about your your regiment you, you, this strict lifestyle that you have to leave and obviously um when i had a look at your instagram you, you know clearly you're in good shape and no doubt you've been in good shape all year round but what does it take to go from sort of normal Rebecca, you know, Monday to Friday, normal sort of year to, yeah. right, i got four months to get into elite pro athlete, like bikini shape. What, talk us through the, and it must be a misery because you, you must be reducing sort of calorie intake and sort of training hard, which, you know. <laughs> yeah, it can be hard. I mean, if, if you're thinking of competing, I'd say, you know, take a long hard think because it is quite a lot of sacrifice Mm -hmm. not only with your food it's also with your friends and your family you have to be quite selfish yeah Uh, you can't really attend um like parties or like go out for dinners and so all of that has to be put on the back burner so that that can be pretty tough so i'd I'd say that's the difference Uh, to be fair i'm quite a home person anyway like I'd, yeah. if someone said to me oh that's get a, a, a takeaway in a dvd i'd rather do that than go out to a nightclub yeah, yeah so for me it's kind of easy in that sense but it's just that you know not being able to just go into the cupboard or the fridge and just take mm. what you want because you you have to like be strict and is that obviously um good good genetics play play a big part in it um but obviously hard work and dedication always, always, always will be the ultimate sort of um, defining moment. Um, yeah. Is it as sort of ruthless as you will be like, I'm not having, I don't know what you eat, but say like a chocolate biscuit, like will one chocolate biscuit make that much of a difference? Like if you had like a biscuit um, sort of in the day, or is it like a psychological difference that you've cheated? Um, I, do you know what? I can't, I can't even say from experience because I was so strict on my last prep. I didn't even well, want to, I didn't even want to risk it. Right. But yeah, I, I'd imagine it. it, it yeah. I, I suppose it just wouldn't be good. Yeah. Wow. Especially so, if you're in peak week, that's the week that oh. you've really got to be strict. So you, obviously I take it, you, you train and um, you train with Chris. Uh, he, that's he, it, he, yeah. he did your program, right? So that's it. Yeah. Do you sort of hit the scales? Um, how do you, do you measure body fat? Do you measure like everything at your starting point or how, so, how it, what's the process? So I'm with Prep by the Robinsons, which is Chris yeah. and Fiona. Yeah. And yeah, so what, what they do, they have like a tra- tracking uh, spreadsheet that I yeah. basically, so I wake up every morning and I weigh myself. Um, and then, so they also give me my food program, which I follow. And then yeah. when I get my training program with what, um, workout i need to do i have to like jot down how many weights i'm lifting so everything everything is sort of monitored so then they can and then they're 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 really good actually because with my last prep i didn't have this they actually do like um from a scale to one to five how tired i'm feeling how hungry i am oh really well so it's really good because then they can obviously think "Mm, if rebecca's a little bit hungry they might increase my calories a little bit maybe and right so yeah it's good 
on, on I'm not trying to make this about body fat, but are you using calipers? Are you using how are you measuring sort of um, muscle density, bone density, water water intake? Is, is does it go as scientific as all of that? It, it can do. I haven't got that far on my program yet, but when I did my previous prep, there was a, um, a machine that you can use. I, yeah. I can't think what it's called, and it basically measures you, yeah. and then it works out your body fat. I think I got down to like 9% wow. for, my, for my last prep. Wow. I mean, that in itself, 9% body fat is... is Crazy. So, <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's crazy. Like, that is absolute... Um, that's that's some going that so you you start off you you get your training program and then i does your calories sort of um decrease as the weeks and the months go by um and the water intake drop off how how does it how does that work so i i don't know because obviously this is down to chris and fiona i'm not sure how right, they're okay. gonna, how they're going to work it out but cuz i've only i've only literally done one competition prior to this wow. So I am quite like a newbie to it all. So I'm sort of learning things myself all the time as well. Yeah. But from my last prep, it, you, you do, um, as you get closer to the competition, yeah. um, you do sort of like, it, it, things do decrease. And then you, what I said earlier with your, your peak week, that's when mm. things are just like, and you, you have, uh, you, with your water intake, you um, increase it. Yeah. And then come the competition, that's when you drop it. So and you dehydrate. You, that's it yeah mm, it's um it, it's interesting and peak week is that the week prior to competing i take it that's correct right. yeah yeah and where where are we talking now we're we talking a thousand calories a day or are we are we lower than that again everybody's different oh, right, everyone, yeah. so depending, on... It, it, depending on who you are and what your body is and so y your coaches will work that out for you wow and is uh <laughs> After, after you, I'm interested in sort of after the competition, do you instantly just think, right, I'm going on this binge or actually have you changed your mindset that much where you think, do you know what? I, I haven't had takeaway food for that long. I've sort of convinced myself that I don't really need it or miss it. And you just sort of, sort of carry on or do you just think, right, I'm having a large donut kebab. <laughs> 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 if only I remember with my last one, I ate like a Krispy Kreme and I felt sick straight away because I hadn't had wow. it in so long. So you have to basically you have to follow a reverse diet and go back up the scale, right? And, and just reduce yourself back in, yeah. So I mean, I, I personally wouldn't recommend stuff in your face because, well, for me that would just make me feel ill. Yeah. Um, I mean, everybody's different. Some people, <laughs> you know, you know, it's up to them if they yeah, want to do yeah. it. But, but for me, I, I wouldn't be silly. I'd sort of ease myself back in. And is there sort of any food in particular that you particularly enjoy, which is like after I compete, I'm definitely going there for a meal or I'm definitely having that? So I've, I actually said to my boyfriend, I said, when, when I finish um, the comp in April, I, I know I'm going to fancy a, like a scone with like clotted cream and jam. <laughs> yeah, right. Rebecca, you're talking my language now. Um and I don't want to make this about me, but obviously with what I do in, in, in mountaineering and hiking and adventures, I literally plot routes off good cafes where they have the best scones. Oh, I love um, scones. Um, I don't know if you've ever been to North Wales, but there's a no, cafe. No, I haven't. Let, let me, oh, this is where, tell your boyfriend, I'll send you the, <laughs> I'll send you the, I'll send you the location. It's called um, Moisha Boy Cafe and it's near uh, Banger in North Wales. And oh, they, right. do, they do large, and I mean large, um, scone, jam, cream, and butter. Oh. And I believe the last time I asked, one scone is sitting at 1,300 calories per oh. sitting. Are you joking? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> they they are ab they're absolutely gangster. Because everyone who goes there is always out mountaineering, burning tons and tons of calories. Um, right, yeah. When you go there, you're like... You can afford to do it. <laughs> yeah, well, I've burned 6,000 calories today. <laughs> Bring on the scones. Bring it on. <laughs> yeah, no, honestly, and to be fair, they are so amazing, it's, it's not even funny. Like, I would literally drive from the northeast now to get a scone down there. That really? Like, wow. No, 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 no. I'm even, like, already now planning, like, when am I going back to North <laughs> Wales? Because... <laughs> 
because <laughs> you just want one. <laughs> I need a scone. Yeah, and it and it's got to be cream as well, hasn't it? Cream and jam. I like clotted cream. Yeah. Yeah, clotted cream. Yeah, no. It's, it's... got to be that. It's all about the clotted cream. I think that's the only reason why I hike so much. There's sort of this great. There's a great meme which is someone's made, and it's like we only hike for cake, <laughs> <laughs> which, which always sort of makes me laugh. No, so that's a good. Um, I thought you were going to say something like a little bit more market there, but I'm chuffed that you've gone straight, <laughs> straight in on scones. Yeah, no, that's a, that, that's a, that's a great thing. Um, so how did you get to know Chris then? Do you, do you know him personally or is it through Instagram or? So it was basically through competing. Oh, so okay. when I competed back in April last year, I literally, I was a novice. I didn't have a clue what I was doing or um, it, where to go or what, what to like to get, you know, the right sort yeah. of training or anything. And um, so I become friends with, she's now a really good friend of mine, um, Sam Williams. Right. And uh, she was also competing. And yeah. Chris and Fiona um, were actually coaching Sam. And that's how I found out about ah, them. Ah, right. Okay. Cool. Um, I mean, sort of on a personal level, what, why do you want to do this? Like, what is it about this sort of challenge that really gets you motivated to, you know, put the time in the gym and the diet? And, and, and I'd always say to people, actually, the training part is the easy part. It's the diet where everyone, you know, where a lot of people fall down. Um, yeah. You can't, out, I mean, I've tried for years. You can't out train a bad diet. Um, and... I think that's the misery, isn't it? Especially now in the world we live in now with convenience, Deliveroo, just eat, yeah. all these takeaway apps. It's everywhere you, Yeah, everywhere you go, garages, you know, confectionery sweets, um, chocolate, um, and, and all that sort of carry on. Um, so what, what is it about this that, you know, really gets your sort of fires going? And where do you see it going sort of, professionally long-term business what what do you think will happen in the future so the, the thing that keeps me sort of with the fire in my belly with it so I, I decided to compete because I suffer with really bad anxiety and I'm agoraphobic oh so agoraphobic right yeah so, sorry I don't what what's I've not heard that before what's so agoraphobia it's it's and um, a lot of people get confused they think it's a fear of open space Right. But it is okay. in, it's it's um it's an anxiety disorder. So ah, um, okay. it, it's where you feel um you can feel trapped and when I mean trapped it's not like yeah. claustrophobia where you're trapped in a room. Yeah. It's more I can sometimes get it if I'm sitting at the hairdressers and because I'm sitting in the hairdresser chair and the right. girls doing my hair, i I think, Oh my god, say I have a panic attack, I'm stuck oh, in wow. the chair. And I can't get out because the girl's going to think I'm a weirdo if I just get yeah. up and start like panicking and stuff. Yeah. So it is situations like that. Or ah. just, if I go out for dinner, you know, sometimes you can get like little booths in restaurants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't sit. I can't be sat against the wall where I'm stuck, where there's right. other, other people next to me. So I have to sit on the like end. Do you, and do you, do you always feel like you need an escape? Yeah, that's it. You ah. start, as long as I can see that exit, and my like literally, as soon as I get into somewhere I've not been, my like eyes are scanning. Where's the wow. exit? Where's the exit? So I know, oh, I can get out if I need to get out. Yeah, I know. I know a few people who have been um, sort of fighters, uh, um, either sort of professionally or just in the street, and they always have this thing of like whenever they go somewhere they'll sit sort of like looking at the entire restaurant or like working out the doors so they know yeah. where people are coming in from. Um, yeah. I'm not saying you're trying to fight everyone in the hairdressers, but <laughs> like it's, it's sort of like a control thing, isn't it? Where you're trying to like keep all the cards that you've got all the cards. So, you know, if you, whatever reason, I know I can get out that door. That's um, it. It's all psychological, I suppose, because yeah, you, you think of things that probably aren't going to happen, but because mm. you've got, I've got this, and I start thinking, oh my God, say, say I pass out, and then this happens, and then right. oh, if I pass out, then everyone's going to think I'm... You, you worry about what other people think. That, that, that yeah. plays on it a lot as well. We, we, live, in a very, we live in a very judgmental society, um, and... I think a lot of people claim that they don't care, but secretly, I don't know anyone, and I include myself in this, 
who who doesn't truly care what other people sort of pass pass judgment and yeah it's a, it's an interesting one and is it something so obviously you you've got that agoraphobia and you're now putting yourself on stage to literally be scrutinized so really you are really facing you've gone like full on face to face with your sort of demon haven't you like face to face nose to nose really that's it. I think with me, because my anxiety um, got so bad, I wanted to have something to focus on. And right. for me, going to the gym was my medicine. Like I've been on antidepressants before in the past. Yeah. Um, I've tried numerous different types of therapy and just going into the gym and just, I think what it is, is distraction. A lot of mm. what helps people with phobias and stuff like that is um, having a distraction mechanism to sort mm. of, so you don't think, because it's a lot of it is what you think up here and your brain sort of is like your little enemy and it's saying, oh, but this might happen and oh, mm. you, that might happen and it just sort of, it just brings out anxiety in you. So for me, just focusing and being um, in a routine and, so like what you say it's almost like being in control yeah with with my food and it it did really help me mm, it's, uh, it, it, it's interesting and you to be commended on on doing that to you know going full on into your um facing your fear like that and I, I wonder if the rise of social media um has though i think social media is a force for good I also believe it is a terrible force for evil as well um, in this sort of hunt for likes and following and, and all of that. And I think Instagram just recently has made a, a really great move where they've now hidden the likes on pages. So right, That hasn't happened on my page yet because oh, I've right. heard about it. But yeah, it's not, I've not seen it yet. On, on my business page, if you was to view it as you, you yeah. would just see that people have liked it. It no longer tells you the number. Oh, okay, right, that's um, good. Yeah, and it just, it, they, and, and, and I think because I'm, I've heard tales of this, that people at school and, and bullying, bullying's always been around, that people are sort of, oh, how many followers have you got and who's following you and how many likes did you get in a post? And people yeah. are actually now being bullied because they're not getting likes and follows. And it's like... That's crazy. It, it, it's, it's very sad. Um, it is sad. It, it, it's by no means a page, a business page, a personal page is not really a representation of an individual. I've met so many people who to look at a page to then speak to the person it is, is a different, is, is a different person. Um, and, and on that, um, which will bring us nicely onto social media, how do you find social media? Um, and do you spend a lot of time on it or do you sort of do your post, log out of it and think I'll come back to it in a few hours or, does it so, draw you in a bit? Yeah, I do think it's important to have a healthy relationship with your social media because <laughs> I, I'm not going to lie, like I've, I've been sucked in or I've like posted something and it's not got as many likes as my last post and then you, mm. you think, oh no, why is that? And, but I think now you've just got to sort of think, do you know what as well? I think Instagram control a hell of a lot of, of things now to what they did when it first come out. Like they... You, you know it's not by a time order how mm. your posts come up it's just and you, you think how do they figure out how do they know what post you want to come up on your news feed and mm. half my friends say to me beck i haven't like i haven't seen your post what post mm. are you going on about and i'm like oh and they say no it doesn't come up on my news feed so i think it's yeah i think it's important not to try and take things personal it it's um it's because obviously when Facebook acquired Instagram and obviously business wise, you get to a certain point where these platforms want you to pay for posts to be boosted. Right, and actually yeah. if you're not paying, you get sort of, um, I don't want to say sort of, I suppose the word is, um, uh, reprimanded. So you sort of punished for not boosting posts. So right. less and less people of your following, We'll see. So if you've got, I don't know, 10,000 followers and you put a post out, maybe it's a thousand out of that, 10 might see it. And the others just won't see it because Instagram mm. decided, well, actually, you haven't spent any money with us for ages and your organic reach is just dead. 
Yeah. And, and it takes a lot of people commenting and liking for it to like really pick up traction. Um, generate back up, yeah. I mean, um, what other platforms do you use? I, 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 do you use LinkedIn? Uh, I... No, I, do you know what? I used, I, I'm not on LinkedIn. I used to have a Twitter account, but then it, the novelty wore off. So I deleted, <laughs> deleted the account. I, I was on Facebook, but I haven't been on Facebook for the last five years because I found that really unhealthy. Um, yeah. As in, I just see it more of like a dear, 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 dear I can't get my words out again, a dear, dear dream. Yeah. So people just writing all their problems. Yeah, and yeah. Like, oh, I feel really crap. And then someone would go, oh, what, what, what's up? They'd go, oh, DM me. Yeah. And you think, well, why are you writing it on your wall? Mm. If you obviously want people to know, and, and now someone's asked, you sort yeah. of are saying, it just started getting on my nerves. So I come off that. So the only, what, well, the only thing you're on is you, you've got, have you got a website? No, I haven't got a website. Right, so no. literally Instagram is your own main, is your own yeah. is, well. Instagram, yeah. And where would you say you're at, you're at with that a day, sort of a few, hour, a few hours a day? I mean, I've set like a time limit on mine, so like two yeah. hours. I've got, I've got better. Like there would be a point where I would just pick up my phone and I, I, I'd be on autopilot and I'd just go straight to Instagram and I'd be like, oh, like, yeah. Why am I on this for? But I am trying to be more mindful now because yeah. I think it's important. Because I think, you know what, like you, you, I go out and about and I see people like on their phones, like walking mm. down the road. I see like couples in a restaurant and they're both yeah. on their phones. And like, I think it's really important to try and be in like the real world rather than like this reality world. 100%. So at the moment I am trying to be mindful and I, do, I literally will probably scroll and put it down. And so, sometimes I log out. Just, yeah. just to keep away from it for a bit. No, I think that's um, it's something that's definitely. Uh, I think if you're trying to be a human being, social media, it has to be turned off, and especially with uh, you mentioned your, your your boyfriend. I mean, you can be both sat there, can't you? And maybe he's on his phone, and you're on your phone, and you think we haven't spoke to each other for an hour. Um, yeah, and you're in the same room, and it's like. But, you know, and that's quality time, I think, that you have to try and spend with your partner. Um, especially, I mean, he, I mean, you're going through your suffering, but, I mean, your partner, obviously, you know, you were saying before, you can't go out for a meal. Um, if you go to the cinema, you're not having popcorn and, 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 and sweets, are you? And does he sort of, like, think, well, if we go to the cinema, I can't have them because she can't have them. I don't know. So he's he's really good to be fair because I think yeah. he knows that I'm in prep. He's doing his own little prep. Bless oh, him. Oh, cool. <laughs> so he he, he said to me, yeah. He said to me, as soon as you start yours, I'm starting mine. Um. So he he's it's good in in that sense. But I think if he was to eat things in front of me, I've got quite strong willpower, oh, right, so okay. it wouldn't really affect me too much. Yeah. No, fair. That's uh, that's fair enough. And how do you fit training? life do you have a normal job yeah i have a well a, a nine to five monday to friday yeah yeah there. uh how do you fit how do you fit it all in it is it is hard i'm not gonna lie <laughs> it <laughs> is it's, it's literally so i will a normal day i will wake up probably at six o'clock yeah and and i'll go and do my breakfast and take my supplements and yeah. vitamin tablets and then um yes yeah, so i do my full day at work and then yeah. i will come back home and i tend to go to the gym um eight o'clock onwards because my my gym has got this thing where um miners can go in so i, I want to go on some equipment and i've got like a 10 year old oh, working really? out and i'm just like oh my god so yeah. I'm wait, waiting f f for that. So if I go like later on in the evening, it's better. But I've, I've joined a 24-hour gym. It's not opening for another couple of weeks. So once that's opened, I'll, I'll start hitting the gym probably about five o'clock in the morning. Right. And are you sort of, is it a big corporate chain that you go to? Or is it sort of like an independent or what? It's a leisure centre. So right. you get all different age groups and yeah, and yeah all different types of people. Yeah. And how would you find that environment? Um, obviously, you're going there not just to pose in front of mirrors and, and get no. a boyfriend, and you're going there for, you know, <laughs> to work um, out, yeah. to work out and, and to improve. 
which yeah. is not like everyone goes to a gym. <laughs> no. It, it becomes a bit of a, it becomes sometimes, I'm lucky I go to a really good independent gym and there is no one, the guy who owns it doesn't allow mirrors. There is no mirrors in the gym at all. Oh, wow. Not one, not only, only mirror is in, is in the, the changing toilet. rooms. Yeah, yeah. That's, that, that's it. There's no, there's no mirrors um, because he believes mirrors attracts the wrong sort of people. Okay, and he, that's and he really interesting. And he doesn't want people standing there posing and people sort of, you know. Taking selfies. And... Yeah, and he even, he even, and it's probably been relaxed a little bit, but at one point, definitely, there was a full phone ban in the gym. So there was no, okay. there was no sort of taking photos of yourself on squat racks or, you know, yeah. any, any sorts of that. Um, and I thought, you know, it's a, it's a fair point. Um, it's definitely a fair point to, to, mm. to, try and, to try and enforce it. But what's the, um, what's the 24 hour gym? We've got a few of them up here now uh, in, in the Northeast. I wonder if it's the same chain. Is it Snap Fitness? No, it's Anytime Fitness. Right, okay. So, mm. yeah, as soon as that... It, well, it used to be a McDonald's, and now they've turned <laughs> it into... <laughs> which is quite funny. Now they've turned it into, into the gym. So, um, I, I, when, well, I get a ch when I get a chance, though, I don't know if you've heard of Rip Gym in Basildon. Right, it's, no, no, it's, no. It's, it's a really good, like, proper muscle oh, works okay. gym. Yeah. So, when I, when I get a chance, because it's... You know, it's not exactly around the corner to where I live. I, yeah. do, I do head down there, but the leisure centre at the moment is yeah. um, my local. But as soon as the 24-hour gym opens, that that'll be that fit more into my routine. Awesome. And on your on your routine, how much is weight and how much is cardio? So at the moment, I'm doing no cardio. None. It's just mainly weight focused. Right. Yeah. Okay. And. What is that weight five times a week, two days rest? Uh, that's it, yeah. Well, and what sort of, is every day sort of individual muscle groups or is it full body workouts every day? Um, so I do a full body workout for one of the days and then yeah. the other is upper and then legs. Oh, right, okay. So, and then mixture between. What is your worst machine or exercise <laughs> which you absolutely hate doing? Uh, think. And, and before before you answer do you know what a pendulum squat is no what's that <laughs> the, my gym's got this machine and it's it's a squat a, a standing vertical squat but it's sort of on an angle right um, and it's called a pendulum squat and I, everyone falls foul to it because you you apply this like well when i'm seated and i'm doing a leg press or i'm squatting i i can do this so you try and implement it on this pendulum squat <laughs> and you, you, because of the because of the way the machine's angled it really targets a, a certain t type of muscle within the leg group right and you unrack it and you just nearly die <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely yeah i don't think buried. i'd like that then. <laughs> <laughs> and i don't you know what i i'd say when i first sort of got into the gym i was intimidated so i used to avoid mm. like the weight area and stuff i think mm. it's because as as a, as a girl, you kind of feel mm. intimidated because it's quite ma like male dominated and stuff. Yeah. But but obviously now I've sort of I'm really confident and stuff, yeah. which is good. But I I'd say I'd say probably like the stairmaster. Oh. Yeah, that to me I've got asthma, so I'm just like oh, right, I've got got my pump on the go, ready. <laughs> but stairmaster. yeah, I do, yeah. And is that obviously the stairmaster? W will you be bringing any cardio back into the regiment or are you just, is it just weight I, focused all the way? I think it, yeah, I think Chris and Fiona will be putting some kind of cardio, but um, at the moment I like, I like to swim. So, yeah. um, cause Great it's like, low, yeah, it's brilliant. Cause it's quite low impact. So I'm still allowed to do it, but like I swim a mile, like every weekend. Nice. So that's right. the only sort of cardio I'm doing at the moment. Right. And, um, ever done anything sort of distance ever ran a marathon or anything sort of like that any aspirations maybe in the future but when i was younger i was really athletic so um like when i was in secondary school i was in like the athletics team and the cross country team so i used to do a lot of i was a middle distance runner so i'd do like the 800 awesome. meters yeah yeah that's and good. stuff um yeah and cross country i absolutely love that but um, yeah, me, me old knees are not too good these days, so. <laughs>
Yeah, knock, knock the road running on the head. <laughs> yeah. um, Rebecca, we're absolutely making great time and we're flying through this podcast. So what I'd like to do now is we're going to move on to the five watts, which is sort of the downscale of the show. So yeah. if you're ready, um, the first one, um, what's the greatest advice you've been given? So my greatest advice is be kind because you never know what someone's going through yeah. and um, always fo follow your gut instinct. Very good. Be, be kind. Um, I always think it's a great one because I, I believe not, not so much religious person, but definitely karma. Definitely about, oh, yeah. you know, I believe if, in karma. if you're an asshole, yeah. it, eventually <laughs> it, it comes back to you. Yeah. And if you do people good turns all the time, um, you know, being a good person is just the right move to make in life at, at, at all times. Um, so no, that's a that's a good one. Um, second one, uh, what's on your bucket list? I've a, so, I've a, I'll just elaborate on that. Either personally, or um, anything business wise, or anything sort of aspirational that you'd like to achieve. So this is a personal one. I yeah. really want to go to the Bahamas and swim with the swimming pigs. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen it on Instagram? Yeah, I've, I've seen it, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm dying to do that. Pig. I've got to do that. Um, yeah, it's it it, <laughs> it does look pretty cool, doesn't it? It looks yeah. amazing. Fair, fair enough. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a good one. Um, now, this one's always a um, tricky one for some people. Um, what's been your toughest day? Um, so this, this will probably be quite a bit deep. So probably, um, my hardest days, um, watching my dad battle with cancer and then actually losing him. Okay. I'd say that's been the hardest yeah. hurdle of my life. Yeah. And um, that's, that's, yeah, it's an awful, it's an awful, awful disease. And, you know, I think the thing is with cancer, it doesn't matter how fit you are or your age or your sex or, or, or anything. When it comes calling, it, it, it just everyone who I've and I've known I've known a few people who've passed away and I've known people who've, who have beaten it, but it's always the same harrowing story. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. It it changes people so much. Um. So no, it's that's a that's a fair point. I could understand that. I think, um, yeah, everybody's affected by it some mm, way or another. So I think everyone can relate to it. Yeah. Yeah. Fair fair point. Uh, thanks for sharing that one. And it must be tough. Um, yes. Okay. Number four, moving on to happier things. Uh, what's been your happiest day? Um, so I, I, well, I believe that every day I try and be happy because you yeah. never know when you're going to pop your clogs. Right. <laughs> um, my recent most happiest moment was probably coming um, in the top three in my first bikini competition oh, wow. and getting my pro cards. Awesome. That was definitely one of my happiest memories, yeah. I thought you were going to say getting your dog, Kaiser. <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't know if that's a curse or a happy thing. <laughs> um, on your photo, I mean, the dog looks quite a uh, he looks quite a stocky chap. He's he's still his knees. <laughs> he's a big lad. Yeah, he's only one. He's only just had his first birthday. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> um, it looks but, like he's got a lot of character about him. Oh, he's got a massive character. Massive. Yeah. yeah. He's a handful. <laughs> have, you had to, have you had to put him out of the room? Yeah, he'd be going yeah. psycho. If I, he's literally, he's got ADHD, I swear. He's just a psycho dog. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> fair, fair enough, they, they all do. Uh, number five, um, what, what's next? Um, so next, so I've got the UK Championships with Pure Elite yeah. in April. Yeah. So, yeah, my main priorities are with that. And um, I, I'm also actually um, going to do a PT course as well, so, so I can become a PT. Cool. That's uh, that's an interesting. Um, your competition in April. Yeah. Uh, w where where is that? So it's in Margate in Kent. Oh, in nice. A, in a place called Winter Gardens. Oh nice yeah, yeah. Venue. Yeah. Oh, cracking. That's um, the Garden of England. That's what they call Kent. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cool. When, when about in, when about in April? So it's actually the day before my birthday. Oh. It's <laughs> it's the eighteenth of April. So. I'll be yeah, celebrating cool. the day after because it'll be my birthday, so that'd be pretty well, cool. Well, on the day after, you can have a birthday grenade bar, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'll 
I can, yeah. <laughs> I'm a scone. <laughs> yeah, well, don't don't go too crazy because I think that might put you over the edge. Um, <laughs> do do you eat those? Uh, I mean, this is just gone a little bit off topic, but what's your take on this explosion of protein bars and sort of all this sort of stuff? Is it something um, you have within your diet regimen, or do you stay away from them? It's not on my program, right. um, but I, you know, I have I have tried a couple of them. And mm. grenade ones, I've got. Well, I'm basically a pescatarian, so I don't eat meat. I only eat fish. Right. Okay. So a lot of in some of them grenade bars, they've got like yeah, pork, animal... pork or beef gelatin. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can't eat them. But um, yeah, I don't. I, I suppose they're good if. You know, you want to say you can't take a protein shake or you just mm. need an extra bump of protein, they're all right. But they're not something I'd say like rely on heavily yeah, as no. part of your diet. No, no, brilliant. Um, yes, troops, uh, that's been an awesome insight into the world of um, professional bikini models. Who'd have thought it? It's, <laughs> it's, it's like, like I knew it would be, it's actually hard work. Imagine that. Imagine trying to compete and, and show off your physique is hard work of course it is it takes sacrifice and it takes commitment just yeah. as everything does in life um, that's anything it. anything that's easy don't do it because it doesn't have any outcomes and it exactly. doesn't have anything you become lazy <laughs> yeah don't, don't only become lazy when you get old and it's almost time to say <laughs> goodbye then you can become lazy once you've achieved your goals um, <laughs> Rebecca where can people find you um, not literally well, <laughs> only on social media, obviously. <laughs> so yeah, you can you can find me on my social media. It's just just my name at Rebecca Aldham. Yeah. Well, A L D H A M because a lot of people spill it with an O instead of an A. Right. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. And <laughs> your pro competition, if people wanted to sort of get tickets and and all of that, where would they find the information for that? So you can go on the Pure Elite website. Yeah. Um, or you can go on the Winter Gardens website and get the tickets, um, which will be on the 18th of April this year. Awesome. And how will that will that be? Um, what sort of attendance does it get? Does it get sort of are they full? Are they? Is yeah, it no, it's it's very popular. So it's it's normally oh, wow. quite a packed out venue. Yeah. Well, well, troops. There you go. You've heard it. If you want to. Um, get the tickets you've got to get them early have a trip down to um margate <laughs> down to the garden of england and uh have, have a weekend and if you, if this podcast has inspired you and you've enjoyed what rebecca said um get in touch with her tell her that you're going to try and compete or you want to try and make some positive changes and yeah uh, th think about where you'll be in a few years uh, rebecca look thanks very much for giving up your personal time um, that's okay. I take it you're, you're going to the gym now. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I'm literally going to head down to the gym and do my evening workout. There you go, troops. Yeah. Dedication. <laughs> uh, that's how it has to go. So uh, we thank Rebecca. Uh, this podcast will be out ASAP. Uh, Rebecca, thanks very much for coming on the show. And that is the end of the Egg podcast. Thanks, John. Thanks for having me. Uh, adios, mate. Adios. See you later. <laughs> Bye.